about you all day From a mind slip away In the city of angels Never held on so tight Like I fear for my life Only stop cause you said so Everybody's home While you are looking for the dream Leaving me alone The dream was supposed to be me Hi, welcome back to One Voices. In this podcast, we will be talking about a relationship with our parents as Asian American teens. First, we will talk about our parental expectations and our fears and our assumptions about what they expect of us. You may remember, I'm John, and my parents and I are Korean immigrants who moved into the U.S. in 2016. My parents, since I have moved from Korea, wants um, me to go to some... um, Colleges that are well known, even to Koreans, and I am, um, I personally want to go to those colleges as well. Yeah, I, I think that's, <laughs> I think that's a good point. That like, um, obviously, for me as well, um, my parents do expect me to go to some great or um, well known colleges, um, like for example, I- Ivy League colleges mm-hmm. or other well known colleges for like you know STEM. Um, and obviously, I do want. I do also expect myself and want myself to go to these colleges as well. But I think um, my parents make like a much bigger deal out of it than I do. They um, kind of. It kind of almost seems like they want everything that I do now to revolve in some way or form around preparing for college or um, something from my college resume. But um, you know, for me. While that's important, I definitely also want to try to balance like self care or having fun into my life as well. So I think yeah, that that's kind of where it splits. But I do agree with my parents in some of those expectations. So yeah, my parents do the exact same thing for me. Like they're always questioning like how I can make better use of my time to like think about college or like what I can do to like prepare for it. And even when I was younger, they would always be like making it clear that like, oh, I should like be trying to aim for Ivy League at least. And like, they're always talking like Harvard and stuff. Mm -hmm. Or especially because my dad is Anglo-Saxon, my mom is Asian. My mom's always had a set plan. Like she always used to tell me that growing up, she always knew what she wanted to do. While my dad, it took him some time to figure out, like he didn't immediately go to like higher education. So I've kind of been struggling with that because you want to like fulfill both your parents' expectations but my mom wants me to have like a set plan, but I still don't know what I want to do with my life. And like, it's like a big decision to make when you're still like a teenager. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think the first time my parents like talked to me about college was when I was in like third grade. So like growing up, everything was all like revolving around college. Like I would be doing stuff for my like own, like having fun for myself. Um, but somehow it would be related to college. Like when I first started skating, I did it for myself. I had fun with it. And then eventually my parents talked to me about how I have to relate this to college and how this would be important for college and so on and so forth. I think like from my parents' perspective, I think I have learned to empathize with them because it, at least for my parents who grew up relatively poor and from a smaller town in India, like the prospect of education as your only tool to succeed was like ingrained into them from the start because they didn't have much growing up. So I think that translated into their parenting for me. Like they they always tell me that they want me to have what they didn't, which was a lot. And they ha- seem to have a lot of regrets about their education. Um, and they want, I understand that they want the best for me, but sometimes I feel like 
it's just them living vicariously through me instead of them seeing what I want to pursue. But I do understand it from their side because there were a lot of dreams that they couldn't fulfill, you know? Like they came to this country and they had to let a lot go. Um, yeah. I definitely appreciate my parents for like um, expecting so much out of me and like, you know, helping me figure out these like, you know, their ambitious expectations of me. But I, I feel like at some point, it's as if I'm not in control of my own life anymore because, you know, in one way or another, everything I do is in some way like fulfilling their plan for my life to like get into an Ivy League college or a very well-known college. So it's, it's like, you know, um, what, what part of my life do I have full control over anymore? Like what part can I uniquely decide on? So you know, it, it's... It's nice, obviously, when you when you have parents that care a lot about your education and a lot about your future. But um, there there has to be some sort of distinction at, at some point. I feel like I haven't quite gotten to um, acknowledge that distinction with my parents yet. Yeah, I agree. Like some of the things about myself, and I'm like, do I really know what I personally want? Because most of what I do is because of what my parents want for me. So I don't know if I actually like want what I'm doing, you know? Yeah, like, um, for me, I've learned to, like, kind of want what my parents want, almost because, like, they went through, like, everything to, like, even get to America. Like, they had to go through so much studies, and they had to dedicate their entire life, and they came to America with, like, very little, but they still, like, got to the point they are at right now, so it kind of feels like I owe them to do well and do what they want. So I've like learned to want what they want, but then I think back like, is it really what I want? Yeah, I think something that I've learned with my parents, which could be like true for everyone's parents, is that they not only want what's best for me, but they want me to be the best. And I think that creates so much pressure. I see it a lot with my older brother where they pressure him like often about like, this is what you should do to get into college, this is what you need to do. And I think I see that like, and it pressures for me to do well. Like if I get a bad grade on the test, I feel like it's gonna be the end of the world with me. And I don't know, it's kind of like, is what it is. I agree. And I always think about like, what will my parenting style be like <laughs> when I have a child? Or like, raise a child? Like, will I, will, I, don't want to repeat what my parents did, definitely, but I acknowledge that I would never trade my parents' love for anything else. Like, it all comes from a place of love, even though it's in a very convoluted way through the guilt tripping and like the high expectations. I want that same love to show for my child, but I want to support them like very vocally and not where I have to look for that support. You know, I feel like sometimes for my parents who actually did not want me to apply like for a liberal arts college or like for English or history or anything, they were very like scared, they're terrified. They're like, how are you gonna make money? How are you gonna be stable? How are you gonna buy a house? <laughs> how are you gonna pay off your debts? Like, you, you can't do that. Yeah. And. That's like terrifying to them and to me too, quite honestly. But I don't know, I think about like, if I have a family in the future, how will I support them? I think um, it's really the, um, the matter of you preserving your own, own identity and having a standard to judge. Once you understand like where all those thoughts are coming from, from your parents, mm -hmm you can actually take that as an advice instead of being so stressed out by just simply even just talking about the college and tests and stuff. For me, um, I think it's like a mutual trust that's been accumulated over years. My father and I have a lot of conversations about not only just college application, but like in general things, he just teaches me about different ways like he works in like marketing and stuff he teaches people he just gives me some knowledge and kind of like throwing out some stuff that I could try like he instead of like just forcing me to look for something and 
you should do this or that. He really just finds something on the internet or like from his companions, anything. Like even his internship program, he just throw it out to me. This is the information that you may consider to look into. And that's how I came to this internship program, which I'm really grateful of. And yeah, in that sense, parents. Megan. Yeah, Megan, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As Megan mentioned about like parental love and stuff, of course, like everything really is from their love. And I think we should be more accepting to, uh, we should be, we should accept the parents the way they are, maybe. Yeah, like, my mom is always, like, trying to teach me everything that she didn't learn from her parents. What she learned through life so that I can live, like, wiser and better. And I think also, like, a lot of how my parents parent is due to, like, culture. Because at least in China, which is, like, where my mom is from, there's, like, a huge focus on education. Like, mm -hmm. sports and, like, arts often get, like, neglected a lot in favor of education and it's just focused on a lot and I think from that like mm -hmm. that's why she parents the way that she does like and so through that it's like not just parents but it's just like the whole at least Chinese culture that education is focused so much on mm -hmm. and I think what May was talking about about like American culture like from what I can remember like I've always been trying to like push my limits with my mom to try to get her to like assimilate to that culture like I remember I went to wear these like specific type of shorts like in third grade and I was like trying to tell like this is what all the girls wear but she wouldn't let me because like it's not like she didn't want something like too revealing for me even though I was like a third grader at the time but like that's always been like another part about like expectations because she's just not used to like the culture that's here and like growing up in two different cultures can kind of be like a struggle too. And I like remember an incident very similar where like I always wanted to wear shorts in the summer. Like all my friends would like wear cute shorts and like shave their legs and I'd be like, cool. And like my mom didn't let me shave my le legs until I was like in 10th grade. <laughs> and by that time, I was like so self-conscious and I was like, oh, I'm hairy, I'm ugly. And she's like, no, in Indian culture, like hair is beautiful. And I was like, no, all my white friends, they don't have any hair. And <laughs> I, that like culture shock and that difference was very startling. Like at school, I felt like a whole other person. And at home, like I felt like a whole other person too. So who really am I? I still ask that question all the time. But like being surrounded by people who aren't like Asian American or South Asian, it's really tough, I feel, because you're just expected to act white and to be white, you know? Yeah. Yeah, like you know the lunchbox incident like most Asian Americans oh, yeah. face? Like, mm -hmm. Cause at home, like you love like your culture food. Cause it's like really good and stuff. But once you get to school, it's different because not everyone knows it. And like since you're so young, the kids are just kind of like, cause they expect like like American culture, like that type of food. So it's just startling to them. I think in terms of identity, like about your interests being really not like distorted by your your parents' ambition towards you. I think like having like a hobby may help you to maintain your own identity. Like you pursue what you want to do. And even like a tiny thing, like those interests could contribute to you choosing what you want to do when you grow up. And I've been through that period and now I know what I like to do. I know where my passions are at, but especially those people going through to like those adolescents, definitely they struggle to know who they truly are on the other hand, they're really being distracted at that time because you don't know who you are. And those parental advices could be, you know, stressful, like everything, like, I mean, besides just studying thing, like you don't want them to really <laughs> touch you or talk <laughs> to you. Everything is like kind of annoying. But yeah, I mean, I get it, of course, but like, yeah, I mean, that's the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody goes through the same period of time, and it's really, for it's it's not personal, it's universal. Yeah, right. but I feel like it also comes down to being able to, like, communicate with your parents, and a lot of it with, like, cultural differences, it is kind of hard to communicate sometimes, but 
um, for me, I don't really have that big of an issue with like language barriers, but my mom's English isn't like the best or the greatest. So I don't think I like I've had serious talks with my like dad because his English is better, but I don't think I've had like a serious talk with my mom. And in addition to having to like include like the cultural barriers, but also being able to get past the like talking for like seriously with my mom. I don't know. I don't really have that connection with her. So it's kind of hard to like talk to her about different things for that reason. I think, yeah, it's, uh, I, for me, there's not necessarily like a language barrier, but I don't, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Like there's not really, mm, I don't know how to describe it because it's not like some specific thing that I can pin down. It's like very gradual, but I think over time it was just like, um, it's just like some sort of barrier formed between me and my parents where like now I just don't ever feel comfortable talking to them um, like a about anything. There's like a lot of fear like that I have for m the relationship between my parents and I, like, um, or my parents and me. Um, but like, it, I, I don't know, it's um, like we all, um, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's like, um, <laughs> I don't know, but like, Basically, my parents are always like really, really controlling. It probably has to do with their expectations of like wanting me to go somewhere cool or like big or do something great. They always talk about like how, oh, you need to become a doctor or do something where you could save like thousands of lives and like change the face of history or like something like that. But I don't know, they're always just really controlling. It's like, you know, they monitor my internet usage. They put cameras in my workroom to like see if I'm doing work or something. I mean, very recently I managed to get a new computer and move into my own room, like actually stay away from my parents for a while, which I, I think is great. Maybe it's not necessarily the healthiest way to like, you know, maintain a relationship between you and your parents. But I, I think it allows me to like have my own like self, like maintain my own self, um, which I think is at least good for me. And then, you know, uh, I can, I don't know, it's like really hectic, but I, I, I think that even if there are no language barriers, like there could be like a ton of different other barriers that stop you from talking with your parents. And, and you know, I, I think that contributes to all the fear and the expectations that I think my parents have, because, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, they don't actually d like, want me to 100% go to like this Ivy League college. Maybe they just want me to have a nice future, but I don't know that because I've never had that like deep talk with them. So I think that's also, you know, just just um, a, a barrier um, that, can, that can happen. You definitely, I mean, if I were the parent, um, I would love my children to just simply express what they have in their mind instead of struggling how to approach within, like just, you know, just be frank with your parents, be honest with them. Like, they are gonna accept you. It's like, their loves are unconditional. But like, besides that, I think like, I'm also in like, in like a special case almost, because um, my father has been through all those elite courses of being like going to the good universities. He was not raised rich, but like mediocre, like middle class. He. Uh, worked hard to go to good college, go to good business, like you know, become like the businessman where he works on what he wants to, like traveling the world. And I mean, <laughs> it's funny how my dad keeps on telling me that if you go to good, like you know, if you go to good college and get like a good grades, all you become is the businessman and having like a salary of what? Just like he. I think I, I can see him struggling in between his expectations towards me and his like, like in terms of academics and stuff, but it, I can see my, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how I could see my dad just um, struggling between his expectations towards me in terms of like going to good college and getting good grades, but also he wants me to, pursue what I want to do. Like, even if you're studying hard, there should be a reason of you studying hard and that branch, certain jobs you're looking for, there should, it, it really should be you studying, I think, which kind of 
solved all the problems that we we're having in terms of application, our feature, and stuff. Your dad sounds like really fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> When my dad like found out I was bisexual, when he listened to the to, to the first episode of this, it was like really fucking scary. Cause he was like, "Oh, so I watched your um, I watched the first episode of your of your podcast." I'm like, "Oh fuck." Okay, and he was like, "I I heard you say you're uh, bisexual. Uh, is this a is this a popularity thing that you do to be cool or like?" I was like, "No, this is that's that's me, yeah." And he's like. So like, does this mean you're you're straight and gay? Like, what does this mean? And I'm like, it just means that I like I have attraction to both males and females. And then he's like, so, but does this mean you're gay? And I'm like, no. And he's like, oh, okay, good. And and I was like, I was like, oh, okay. He was like, and then he asked me like, so like, when you're 18, you're still gonna find a girlfriend, right? And I'm like. Maybe? Yeah, like, sure. And he's like, oh, okay, good. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it was like, I don't know. But, like, it almost sounded as if he didn't want me to be gay because he wanted me to, like, I guess carry on the family name. I don't know. Some, some, I, I, I think that's. That's, that's like Chinese culture, right? Yeah. 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 That that that's pretty uh, that's pretty cultural, and I, I I think that's that's like what I think he that's like what I in, like inferred based on what he told what that conversation was, but um yeah uh, uh, yeah I don't know yeah my fear is actually spending time without being truly me, mm-hmm. like losing your own identity because you're so into like social media and like your phone, YouTube, anything, that you just kind of waste your time when it's so precious at this moment. And I think like we all like, um, all the students, especially high school students, the privilege of being able to absorb as much like knowledge compared to you when you become an adult because you're more susceptible like, you know, your brain and stuff. So I think like, I just want to spend more time like not only productive, but doing what I want to do, like truly want to do. For example, writing a journal or writing a poet, um, poems and stuff. Um, I think my like biggest fear, it still like relates to parents, but it's that I don't reach or make my parents proud because they, like I said before, they like done so much to get here and they've achieved like so much with the little they had and they gave me so much and it makes me like kind of worried that with like all that I have that they gave me that I won't be able to achieve as much as they did and I guess that's just like my biggest fear. Yeah I think same here like I think one of my greatest fears is like failure because like not only would I kind of be like failing myself because like my expectations for myself are like essentially the same as my parents I feel like I'm also letting them down as well, especially because they like they put so much like time and effort into raising me to become like who I am right now, and I feel like not being able to reach their expectations kind of like wasting all that time and effort. Mm-hmm. Cause like you can get a bad grade on a test or like not to do so well on like like a class or something, but like ultimately failing and like not living up to their expectations is like the biggest fear because that's like again like what you said like they put all that work and effort just for you to like not do anything with it kind of i think that's like a like we're urged to pay back when we receive Mm -hmm. for me and like do you know prestige institution no you know you have never taken (laughs) it's like a tutor for like sat act even ap classes and i never had it like any tutors in my life but that was the first time that I tutored for ACT, and I took the ACT, and I'm kind of worried that I'm, I might not, you know, fulfill what they expected. And like, really, it's I shouldn't be thinking like this. It, this is not the way. This is not the reason why my parents would have given me, you know, tutor. But still, like, there's like internal guilt almost when you kind of do not meet the goals you and your parents have set up. And you can always retake it. So yeah, that's so. good. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, I've retaken the ACT. <laughs> and it's, yeah. So, um, but I think also my greatest fear is also not being able to, like, pay back my parents 
whatever that means, like when they grow older, not being able to be there for them or like making them proud. And I feel like me being bisexual just like throws everything out the window for them. And like, that's the greatest disappointment for them. They're like, oh, she's not straight. <laughs> like that's disappointing for them because they see it as an obstacle for me while, in fact, I see it as it like enriching my life, you know, being a part of the LGBTQ community. But they don't see it that way. They see it as, oh, you won't get a job or like people will discriminate you. You will be harassed and no one will take you seriously. Um, no one will love you or care for you. And those are things that they've said to me. And I'm like, okay. And it's hard not to internalize those things. But I think like John said, like you can't live your life being in fear of yourself. That's, I don't want to live my life that way. And yes, maybe my sexuality is a part of that, but I want to live like freely, like me, you know? I don't want to waste that time. And I'm sure my parents do maybe have a point, but I want them to come around eventually. And it's very scary, <laughs> um, like living in with that opposition all the time. Like sometimes I wonder like, what would my life be like without all this opposition to like me, you know? And it sucks, but yeah. My biggest fear, I think, regarding my parents is losing myself because of them. Like, if I get so caught up in their expectations and what they want me to do, I'm afraid that, like, I won't know exactly who I am. And it might be a bit different for me. Because, like, going back to what we said about, like, the barriers between us, there are things that I go through that my parents will never go through because they're being white and me being Asian. And it's, like, also kind of hard to talk to them about it because I am Asian and they're white, so, like, they're not going to experience it. They could be like defensive over something I say, which I'm always scared about. But something about that is I don't want to lose the like an Asian part of me to fit with their like whole white family stuff. And we always say like, yeah, we know we're not a white family, but like to fit in with them, it feels like I'm changing a part of myself that I don't want to. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it really like kind of sucks. Like, do all yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. <laughs> no, but but I mean, like, people. I feel like um, this is like an issue that I've also like never tried to reach out about, like all of this stuff, because it's kind of like I have this fear um, that if I do reach out and like try to, um, you know, get get help for these these things or like. Um, try to you know ask for advice it all it's just it'll just seem like it, I, I'm just afraid that people will not give me like helpful advice like like often when when, when you're asking someone else for like a pro like solution they, they just make it they just like minimize it or they just say something that they think they might see it as a simple solution but like, you know, because cause these are issues that I've lived with for like literally years, right? And, and so like, I would have thought of, if I would, if I had thought of something that I think would have worked, I would have done it. But like, you know, if I can't think of anything when I'm living in this scenario for like years, you know, how can anyone else understand, right? So is I don't know, it's just a fear that kind of like uh, blocks, blocks me, I guess. I, I don't know. It's like... Yeah, it it kind of traps you in like it. Well, it really does trap you, and then it's like, well, now what do I do, right? Like, I don't, I, I don't know. Like, this is obviously a problem that I want to solve, but I don't know how to solve it. And uh, like, because I've thought about this for so long, it's just like I've almost kind of accepted it that like you know, my life is just shit, you know. And then like, <laughs> and, and then like you know, this is just gonna this is just gonna be it for the next. Three years, right? It's just, it's just, it's just my life, right? But it was like it's like a spiral going on, right? Yeah, now, right? yeah. But yeah I think but that like, if yeah. you're not happy with how things are going, you don't have to accept it from mm -hmm. anyone yeah. or anything. Yeah. Like even if you don't know the solution, you'll get to it at one point. Mm -hmm. 
it will come soon. I think also with like, at least for me with immigrant parents, like sometimes I feel a bit like a burden because mm -hmm. at least I can tell, my mom says like all the time, she's like, oh, I wish I was in China. I wish I was with my family in China. And I'm sure that my dad also feels the same way. So obviously like me, I'm like part of the reason that they're still here. So I feel like if I'm not like succeeding their expectations and doing what they want me to do, then basically like not only am I feeling like all their effort and time, but it's also kind of like wasting like these massive sacrifices they had to make to even just be here right now. Yeah, I think for me, like I'm really scared that I'm harming my parents more and like um, I'm scared, I'm like harming them, putting like they could have a much better life like without me. Like I'm just, like you said, a burden. I feel like I'm just there and like my parents like left their family back in China just for like my brother and I and we live like far away from them and we have like don't talk with them that often either. So my parents kind of gave up their entire life for me and that just makes me feel really guilty and also it makes me scared to talk to them about a lot of stuff especially like my mental health and because like they're always like, oh, you can talk to us, talk, talk to us about anything. But like when I like started to open up about my mental health, like earlier, like sometime last year, um, it like hurt them, and I saw like the pain that they saw, like when they like knew about what I was thinking and stuff, and it just made me think like I don't want to tell them anymore. And yeah, because like then I feel like I'm burdening them even right, more yeah. than I already am, and like. Especially with COVID and China borders closing down, so like yeah. my mom can't visit her family. Like, I feel like like me being here is like kind of preventing her no, for from like same. living how like what she would see as her like happiest life. Yeah, same. Or I think a lot of what we talk about when we talk about immigrant parents, like when you tell them about your struggles, it like doesn't compare to their struggles. So yeah, like, exactly. it just doesn't feel valid because they've gone through so much more. So like you just like don't size up to their problems right exactly. just like exactly. it doesn't make you feel valid in what you're feeling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i agree and also like as a teenager i know sometimes i treat my parents like like shit sometimes <laughs> like i <laughs> snap at them yell at them be like get out of my room or like i don't want to talk to you and that makes me feel so bad yeah. like why can't i just be a good person to them um, yeah, me too. <laughs> because, like, they've gone through so much. And, like, they put up with it. And I don't know how. And I wish I treated them better. I really do. Like, yeah. I wish I could show them that love. Yeah. I also feel like the same way. Like, they've given up a lot for me. And since, like, I was adopted, I was also... They, just, like, adopting me gave me a whole new chance at like a life so I feel I feel burdened by that because I feel like I have to live up to how they've changed my life like forever if I don't live up to that I feel like I don't know what the right word is of like if I don't feel enough like if I didn't live up to them giving me a whole new life then it's kind of like I'm disappointing myself and them and I do feel bad when I like snap at them or like I'm mean to them and I do think I they deserve, and I always feel like they deserve like better than what I'm saying, better than the way I'm treating them because they gave me this new life. So it's like kind of hard for to just like be a normal teenager who's not with their parents when I feel so burdened. It's important to also ask the question, like, what we want from our parents. Um, like, and I think personally for me, it's to be kind of ask my parents to take my mental health seriously in that asking for therapy um, is something that I've always wanted to do. But that jump to ask for therapy and to actually get the therapy from my parents has been a struggle because they're very unwilling to acknowledge that I live with depression and anxiety and they see it as like it doesn't even exist and so it's been a 
basically what they've told me to do is like pray. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and that obviously doesn't help. And I want them to take like my struggles with mental illness seriously in that I do want therapy and I need therapy and it's okay to ask to need therapy um, and to acknowledge like my emotional like being and well-being you know yeah I relate with you um, I'm sorry mom I'm gonna be a bad kid <laughs> but in a good way I was raised independently and I found I, fa- I found what I'm supposed to do and did it and I mean even if they provide me so well like overflowing overflowing um, sometimes I feel like they're not really giving what I want from them like what I want from them is not something so grand really it's just the empathy like just them empathizing with my situation and my emotion I didn't ask for a solution I didn't ask for like help like actually helping me throughout the the way and I mean, I'm not gonna give up my work. I'm gonna do my work, and I can take control of my own circumstances, even if I get busy. And when the result does not come, you know, when the outcome is not fulfilling your expectations and all, because I know who I am. I know um, what I should be doing to develop my own self. I write a journal to help me with it. But sometimes you just need emotional support from your parents. And whenever I need someone to lean on, sometimes they're just not there for me, (laughs) which I think is really hard, like not only to me, but in terms of the relationship you're having with your parents, because you kind of lose the trust and you um, begin to kind of discourage your own self to express and communicate with them. You turn to your own you know, self instead and decide not to talk. That's not a good way of dealing with all this situation, I think. It's even if that's the case, you still have to reach out to them and tell them that I need emotional support. I, you got to express it in a way that they understand the hardship you're going through, that they acknowledge it and they could think their own way to kind of console their children. That's a healthy relationship we can look forward to. Yeah, um, I what I want for my parents is like less guilt trip, I guess, because mm-hmm. I think um, I did kind of show that I needed help. Like, it got to a really bad point, and so I had therapy for one period of time and lasted like a month because my parents kind of guilt tripped me into thinking like, oh, you're you're fine, you can handle this without therapy. And they kind of also told me, like, therapy costs a lot of money, you know, this is costing a lot on my bank. Like, yes, I'll give it to you if you need it. But, like, I don't think you need it anymore. And eventually I was like, okay, I don't need it anymore. And the joy they had when I told them I didn't need it anymore, I couldn't, like, take it back. So, yeah. I think, um, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. wrong. I feel like this view of... um, therapy and mental health is kind of like cultural um yeah it's i feel like yeah i've had like um the experience of this as well um not like that i've ever had therapy but i probably like would take therapy like if i felt like my parents would um support me with it but i feel like um yeah there's kind of maybe that culture um, or yeah, like like you said, like that that guilt trip that kind of you know stops me from finding it. But yeah, I think that's by far the most like the most effective or the best way to um, you know address these problems. But it's definitely not available to everyone uh, given the circumstances. Is anyone eldest child here? Like, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, like <laughs> in Asian culture, there are more burdens to um, the eldest child that you think mm-hmm. you need to pay back and like support the whole family one day. And I think that's another contributing factor of of being so stressed out by things. You know, my family's like different than that like I don't really know why it is but just in my family my older brother like made it clear that I'm supposed to be the golden child 
that I'm supposed to be the one that has all this pressure on me because my brother feels like he already has too much pressure on him, so he wants me to be the one that like meets our parents' expectations and like doesn't fail through life, which can also be hard. Yeah, and I feel like in a lot of cultures, like you have to have like, at least for Chinese culture, you need like a strong face. Like you can't show weakness, mm-hmm. and that burden always will fall on like whoever is considered like the golden child or like the eldest child, like John said. And I guess because of that, for me personally. I wish like my like parents would listen to me more because I'm like a strong face. You're like not supposed to show like weakness or anything like that. So I wish they like listen to me when I'm talking to them about like my problems, which they already do a lot. But I feel like they like I wish they would listen to me on like a deeper level. Yeah, like like they don't they don't necessarily take you seriously. Is like what it right. mm-hmm. yeah. or like they never can like really accept like their fault sometimes like. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Because yeah. it's a lot from, like, respect. And I think in Asian culture, like, you're supposed to respect your elders. So it's kind of a situation, like, the power dynamic, mm-hmm. I guess, in a way that they're, like, they can't do, like, as much bad as, like, you can do. So, like, yeah. I would really want them to, like, see their perspective and say, like, I've made mistakes and you've made mistakes. But, like, it's in us okay to do that as long as we, like, accept it. Yeah, it's like you're always wrong. It's <laughs> never that. And like growing up, because I'm also the oldest child, like seeing my brother also have to experience that. And like now we can talk about it. Like we're at the age where we can talk about it. But I wish I could, I could have that conversation with my parents and be like, this is like sometimes this is where like I want change to happen. Yeah. And because you're the oldest child, I mean, for your parents, it's the first time like raising, like parenting you too. And like they're going through our adolescence too. And they're trying to learn how to, you know, have a relationship with their children, which, of course, it's hard, not for just us, but for the parents, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like us learning to be teenagers, they're learning to be parents. Because, like, you're never taught how to be a parent, I guess. You learn from your own parents, which, I mean, at least for my parents, like, my grandparents were very strict and distant and weren't really always there, like emotionally, like John said. That's what you crave for, and that absence can influence your own parenting. So yeah, it's it's a learning curve, and there's definitely mistakes made (laughs) on like my part and my parents' part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think like for me, I've like noticed, I think my dad needs a lot of help as well, like mentally and um, obviously he won't listen to me about it and he thinks that he needs to stay sh- like obviously stay strong because of Chinese culture but at the same time it's because of that that I also have to struggle in silence without them knowing they were like kind of embarrassed of me when I was like in the hospital they're like don't tell any of your friends don't like, like make them an excuse just, like yeah so it's just kind of sad that I have to like kind of live in silence without like expressing it and I feel bad for my parents too because I think they're struggling as well but they can't express it either so mm-hmm. yeah like when I was younger like my parents would always be like oh don't tell anyone outside the family yeah <laughs> like whatever is told in the family has to stay in the family you can't tell anyone else yeah and it's like this fear of what other people will say mm-hmm. and like do I give a shit about what other people say? No, but my parents do. Mm-hmm. And that's very hurtful to them. Mm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, actually, I think the family should be the place where you're really accepted instead of, like, you know, in the world, you're really trying to assimilate it to any, like, not only ethnic- ethnicity or any kind of, like, race, but in general, like, community. You try to, you know, blend into them, like, into the society. And really, like, the family is the only place you could be comforted. And I think, like, unconditional positive regard, definitely, like, parents should be more accepting. It's not totally on your fault that you, like, I mean, it's good that you understand your parents' side and try to view things in their perspective. But it's not, like, your fault all the time. I mean, they take time, the parents take time, you take time as well. So it's really... Not like who's, who did what and who did bad, who did something bad. It's really a matter of, like, uh, I can't think of the word. <laughs> Negotiation? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's, um, that's funny, like, the 
the dynamic is, um, you know, I feel like how you said, like, um, in their family, you're, like, absolutely, um, that's where you're um, trusted or, like, you, where you can be yourself. And then you're, uh, when you're on a society, that's where, like, you have to assimilate to culture. It's almost as if, like, that's the other way around for me. Like, like I have friends, um, including you guys, who are very um, supportive and who I can say things to that I would never, like, be able to talk to my parents about. It's almost as if, like, I, I don't know, it feels kind of, like, reversed in that way, um, basically. Um, and honestly, like, the main reason why I joined this podcast was to, like, find that. Like, at my school, there's not a lot of Asian American kids, nor do people seem to go through similar things. So I was like, I need to seek this out. Like, maybe that's one of the first ways that you can address these feelings is to seek out people to talk to, and maybe you have a podcast near you. <laughs> or start one. Like, I mean, I think this has, even though we've had only a few podcasts, like, it's truly been me so meaningful to be able to talk about these things that have just, like, been in my head ever since I was, I don't know, like, just learned like experienced all of these things. So we hope that this conversation also inspired you and you could also perhaps relate to us as well and also find that courage within yourself that you always have had to meet other people and to seek out therapy, to start journaling, to start your own podcast, to also speak to your parents and communicate things you maybe wouldn't have done before. Um, and thank you so much for listening to our podcast and we'll see you next time. Thought about you all day, for my slip away, in the city of angels. Never held on so tight, like I fear for my life, only stop cause you said so. Home. Why you are looking for the dream, leaving me alone? The dream was supposed to be me.